In this part two video, we're going to clean up our blocking of the feline walk cycle, spline it, and polish off a few things uh, to get it looking as nice and clean as we can for kind of a basic cycle. So here's an example of a somewhat finished walk cycle based off of the blocking that we did previously. So I'll open up my blocking, and if I hit play, that's just, you know, what was finished at the end of part one of this series. Uh, so first thing I like to do is I like to go to my animation settings down here, animation there, and switch these from, they were previously in clamped and stepped, I'll switch them to auto. I like to work in auto. Some people like to work in spline or flat tangents. I'll just use auto for this demonstration. And the reason that I switch that is because if, if I add in any extra keyframes, uh, I won't have to throw them into spline when the program put them in stepped because right now I'm going to take everything out of step. So I'll select all the controls here and I'll double click on my timeline, right click, tangents, auto. Uh, alternatively you could select all of the controls, go to window, animation editors, graph editor, and uh, click this button up here. That's with the A. Alright, so most of this uh, work that we're going to be doing is going to be in the graph editor, but we'll obviously want to see kind of the results as we go. So as you can see right now also, uh, there's a lot of jumpiness, there's pops, there's some some parts where the legs hit like a brick wall and the, you know, it's just not very smooth. And that's what happens when you take animation out of stepped mode into spline. Sometimes you get sort of weird pops and floatiness and all that. So first of all, I will hide the tail again using the modified rig that I made, or the modified control for this rig, just so it's not in the way. I'll, I'll add in a little tail flick at the end. Uh, so my philosophy is to pick one control and to work your way through that control and then move on to the next one when you go into spline. So for instance, I may grab this center body control here and this is just to kind of add a little bit of uh, fleshiness to the cat or feline as they're walking and it makes it more uh, natural rather than a stiff walk cycle. So I will open up my graph editor and I have a hotkey for this um, but just remember it's always under window animation editors graph editor. If you want you can click this perforated edge there and always have this little menu off to the side so if you need to you can just click on that. Uh, but I switched mine to be Control shift alt g I think uh, but I have a macro set up. Anyway, so as we look at this here I'll go through one one uh, attribute at a time per control. Visibility, irrelevant for this. Uh, sometimes I'll delete irrelevant keys or at least I'll delete all these useless keys in between. That's just my kind of spline hygiene, so to speak. Um, some people don't worry about it. There are scripts out there. There's one that I used to use. I think it's called Delete Useless Keys for Maya. It'll delete like all that junky stuff, uh, but you can ignore it if you'd like. So we've got our translate X, Y, and Z for this control. So I'll click on X first. I'll hit F to zoom out. And we see that there's some uh, some stuff going on here that we might want to clean up. So first of all, uh, what I also like to do is go to View, Show Buffer Curves. Now what this will do is, let's say I delete a keyframe here. It'll show kind of the ghost of where that keyframe used to be. That way I can adjust the tangent handles and not worry about kind of keys being in the way. Because sometimes you'll have a key and it might be kind of rotated weird and you can't seem to find the right way to fit that handle. Um, but you can just delete the key, edit the main tangents of the extreme peaks and it get that shape. Uh, but for this I'm just going to clear out all of these in-betweens here and just stick with a nice even uh, set. We can always adjust the, the timing of this later but I just want it to be nice and clean Let's look at the translate Y, which I will do the same thing here. You'll notice that 
Let me uh, grab a marker here. So it's kind of favoring one side. It almost looks like uh, shark fins or something. And what that means is that it's kind of speeding into one part, but then slowing out of the other. And depending on the action, that can be good. And that's a good cheat if you want kind of like a an overlap feeling for it. Uh, but for now, for this cycle, I want it to be nice and kind of basic. So I'm just once again going to delete those, leave these as is. Now translate Z, I noticed that I don't have anything on the translate Z, and I think I might want something. So that's going to be uh, this kind of fleshy movement back and forth here. Um, I might come to this later, or I might just kind of kind of guess it. So for instance, let's say I delete all the keyframes except for the first and the last, and then I go to 13, which is halfway in between. I go to translate Z, right click, key selected. Now I've kind of got some room to play with. Uh, for instance, I might go uh, find where both these the, f the back and the front shoulders, so to speak, of kind of the hips and the shoulders, where they're both rotated kind of at the same time. I might go to that and just rotate it to kind of or translate this intersection. If I can get it to work. So just kind of go along with it. I seem to be having, you know, this. Like, there we go, perfect. So I might move that and not too much, just a little bit. So if I zoom out here, go to Translate Z. All right, so it's starting off rotating that way. So it's eventually going to go up the other way. So I'll just take this key, move it up, this key, move it down. And then I'll take this key and move it up too, but there's there's a sheet that I like to use for cycles. Now there are w methods of telling Maya to loop a cycle. Uh, you would go to like uh, keys, pre-infinity, post-infinity cycle. I'm not going to do that right now. I like to just play blast out my main cycle and then loop it in quick time or what have you. So what I'll do sometimes, and I'll, I think I'll do this throughout uh, this tutorial is I'll take some of the keys and I might push them outside of our actual animation here and that's just to give it a better overall flow so for instance um, the extremes here uh, the first one's going to be on frame 4 um, and then the next extreme is going to be on frame let's to be more accurate, it'll be on 16. So I'll highlight this, I'll make sure my move tool is selected. I'll hold shift, and I'll middle mouse drag that to the right until it's over frame 16. And then those keyframes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 frames away from each other. So I want to make this, those two keyframes pretty much the same and there's a weird thing with this rig where uh, this center control for some reason if you move it the tiniest bit it's like 15 billion so whatever uh, my way to kind of fix that and get those as close as possible is I'll highlight those go to my uh, scale tool or R and I'll just kind of middle mouse drag down until they both line up roughly once again it's not that big of a deal if they don't line up perfectly but I want to make sure that these are all 12 frames away from each other. So from frame 4, I'll go backwards. 1, oops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'll just grab this key, hold shift, middle mouse drag left, snap it in right there. And then same thing with this last key. Snap that in. So those keys are on 28 and negative 8. Uh, that'll give us a nice even flow to the cycle. So if we just kind of watch that, it's very subtle, but 
the intersection is going to kind of go back kind of with the movement in between the the two the hips and the shoulders and if the timing doesn't seem right you could always grab all these and shift them left or right I'll just leave it for now alright so that control is finished I'll move on to the back hips or the back leg whatever you want to call them basically hips pelvic controls and I'll just pick one thing at a time once again visibility irrelevant translate X I don't have any uh, this is something that you could add in very polished you could kind of have the the body do almost like an accordion thing where where as he's uh, walking the shoulders and the hips would come closer and then they would spread apart I'm not going to do that in this video because it's that's like a really fine polishing thing that you'd want to definitely pay close attention to video reference at. So translate X, I don't have anything. Translate Y, I do. You'll see that this is really messy here. So we're going to need to clean this up. Uh, I will delete some of these keyframes and I might just figure out the timing kind of by jumping back and forth here. I think I deleted the wrong key. Delete that one, yeah. So I've got my extremes on low, down on 4, up on 10, down on 16, up on 22. Now remember what I was saying about how we can cheat by using beyond what our frames are. So the animation starts at frame 1, but you'll notice that this curve here kind of slows into that movement but if we go to where this moment is the contact on frame uh, 13 which is right there there's no keyframe there because we have the extremes and the computer kind of fixes in between so that that doesn't slow into that thing so there's two ways to solve this we can grab that curve grab the tangent and then middle mouse drag it to be more in line with how this looks or we can use the cheat I used previously and I'll space them apart so one two three four five six there are six apart so I go one two three four five six grab that key middle mouse drag it over there and then whatever number that is .06 I'll make that the exact same number and same thing at the end here move that one two three frames over make sure it's negative .05 and that'll help. The, the, the animation will actually start right here at frame 1, but it's in the middle of a movement because it's a cycle. We don't want it to look like the character is frozen in place in the middle of their cycle and then say, action, and then they start walking. We want it to be more natural where the character's already been walking and then camera starts rolling and we just catch them in the act of walking. And so by putting keyframes outside of our kind of render limit will give us more fluid motion. Uh, moving on to that was the translate Y, translate Z don't have any, that's the the left and right in the hips. That's something that we could once again kind of polish in. Uh, I focused mainly on the rotation of the hips which we'll get to next. So I'll just leave those uh, keys blank for now. Go to rotate X. Uh, that's something that you could really add into if you really wanted to. Very subtle kind of rocking of the hips. Um, but I'll leave that at zero. Maybe delete some of those keys, just preference. Rotate Y, however, from a top view. That's kind of our biggest rotation, right? Or it's the only one we really use, I think. That's kind of the this this rotation there. So that's very messy and there's a very simple solution for it there are two extremes there's the extreme where it's rotated this way and the extreme where it's rotated this way and it just so happens that we're lucky enough that those extremes are on the contact of the feet which are on frame 1 and 13 and 25 so I can just delete all these yucky frames in between and I've got frames 1, 13 25. Now just a, a reminder from last video, 
when we when we play blast this or render it, we'll only render up to frame 24 because frame 25 is identical to frame 1. And when we we want to make a keyframe on 25 so that the movement connects into that pose. We don't want to render frame 25 because if we did, we'd be seeing the same pose in two frames and it would look like it like the character freezes for just a millisecond. Uh, so when we render it 1 through 24, we'll loop it and it all connects very well. So that's it for the rotation of the Y. There's no rotation of the Z, which would kind of be a uh, something that you would want to add into kind of get those legs flexing a little better. Uh, for now, I'll leave it nice and simple. It's something that you would definitely want to pay attention to in your video reference. Say, okay, like, is this cat rotating its pelvic bone inward or not? Check out feline anatomy, all that stuff. Um, so that back hip, that the back legs, upper legs, are all done. You could play blast it if you want to kind of see if it looks smooth. The uh, the body wasn't really what needed the most work. The most work is going to be the front, the four legs there, but uh, and the hind legs a little bit. So I'll grab the front controls for the upper body shoulder controls and we'll just go one attribute at a time. Translate X, none. That's, that's once again, that's kind of the accordion thing going on. So I'll just, don't worry about those, translate Y. That is another thing that we do need to worry about. I'll delete these yucky keyframes in between. However, once again, we're starting in the middle of a curve. So we're going to use that cheat, where I'll grab that keyframe, and how far apart are these? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll move this one three back. Make sure it's the same number as this. So I'll just put, select all those bottoms and make it uh, bottom keyframes negative 0 0.04 or maybe 0 0.03. To be a little, or 3.5. Make it as close as possible to what it was previously. Grab this end keyframe, move it forward, one, two, three, and looks like those are all pretty much zeroed out. So now we've got that where the walk starts in the middle, or the, the cycle starts in the middle of the walk. Translate Z, don't have any. Rotate Y, no, rotate X, don't have any. That would be the, once again, the kind of rocking this way. If you added that in, it would likely be very fine, unless it's a very aggressive walk where you're getting lots of interesting movement in the shoulders. Rotate Y. Another one we can clean up very nicely. Alright. And uh, this is where you can either use a cheat or, like I mentioned previously, we can just rotate those curves or that tangent that way. So. If you wanted to use the cheat, you'd have to move them six frames and then just make it the same number as the other one and flatten it out. Five, flatten it out. All right, rotate Z. Looks like there is some because I originally had the character kind of in a stance, so I'll just leave it at that. Let me get rid of those. If you want, you could give it a round number. I'll just leave it. All right, so the main body controls are done. I'll grab the head next. And the head is an interesting uh, situation here. So when we went through the blocking, all we really did was kind of add in some up and down movement and some rotate left and right movement so that we could counteract the movement in the body so it doesn't look like the cat's head is just stuck to the body and very stiff. Kind of Cats like to keep their head uh, kind of floating in place almost, but we could add a little bit of movement to it. So 
translate x, we're not going to have any. Uh, that would be, once again, kind of an accordion thing that you would add in. Translate y, we'll take a look at that. Very messy. Uh, we're probably going to want to offset this to make it look interesting, but I will delete those keyframes. I'll use the cheat again, where these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 apart. So I'll have to move this, 1, 2, 3, and this one forward, 1, 2, 3. And I'll just make it the same number as those other ones. I think I have the timing in the, the head bob correctly, it, or correct. It's, it's really subtle. Um, so I might just leave that, but if you wanted you could offset it to make it look like it's kind of overlapping. Uh, translate Z. We might want a little bit of Translate Z actually, just to counteract, so I will delete those frames on either side. And on frame like 7, I might uh, kind of have the head drag back a little bit, not much. 0.03 or so. And then on frame like 19, which is the mirror of 7, I'll rotate it in the opposite direction. Negatively the opposite amount. And then you could either use the cheat here where I move these over, or just the quick way is to rotate the tangents so that they flow better. And once again, uh, just as a reminder, I sel I'm selecting the keys. Make sure my move tool is selected, which is W on the keyboard. I'm highlighting a tangent and middle mouse dragging that around. And I don't have to actually click on the tangent to middle mouse drag it. Alright, let's see if that looks... Yeah, I think that looks okay. Just the left and right movement. Rotate X, that would be a kind of a twist movement. We'd only really add in if we wanted to put in some character. Rotate Y is going to be kind of one of our, our bigger things here that I think we'll want to offset by quite a bit. So first I'll delete these yucky in-between keyframes once again. And each of these keys are going to be 12 frames apart from each other. So I'll use the cheat and move this over. And then same thing here. make sure that these numbers are the same. These numbers are the same. Now the head, oops, negative 5 for that one. For the head, I'm going to want it to kind of fall behind and overlap, so I don't want it to rotate at the exact same rate that, so we never even see that rotation, because that's boring. I want to take this whole curve and move it back like Let's try like four frames. So if I grab this and I just hold shift to middle mouse drag, one, two, three, four, give or take, and hit play. And I see how that, that cat's head is kind of dragging back and forth. It's got a little bit of overlap. It might be too much. Uh, here's another nifty trick. If you highlight all the keys here, and I make sure my scale tool is selected, or R on the keyboard, and then over the, the zero uh, line here, I'll middle mouse drag either up or down to scale the curve. So if I make it go up, you can see that cat's like really rocking out, right? It's just, I don't know, listen to some cat music, whatever. I'm, I'm sure that's a genre. Uh, but I'm going to scale it down to like three or so, just to kind of have it subtle. Not by, might be too much, but I'll leave it. Rotate Z, not going to have any. Alright, so now we're done with the kind of the spine area from the hips to the head. Uh, now into the hard part, we're going to work on the feet. So we'll just select one of the feet. So this back, this hind leg, the red one. Start off with one control. And we're just going to want to clear this up. So when the foot is on the ground in a static walk cycle, we kind of want it to translate linearly. So from 1 to 16, that back foot is just translating back on the ground. So I'm going to grab all those in between keyframes, hit delete, 
Then I'll highlight this first keyframe, turn it into a linear tangent, select this bottom one, break the tangent, then select the single tangent, turn that into linear. It's a lot of steps, but once you do that, it'll make a lot more sense. So that, that foot will look a lot more smooth. Then I will delete those two keyframes. Uh, you know, I'll probably keep we keep this bottom one, but I'll delete that middle one because I don't think it's as necessary. If you want, you could try and adjust these, but I think that's fine for now. Translate Y is a major one that we're going to need to make sure looks absolutely right. And there, another very nifty trick is if you have a control selected, you can highlight any of these attributes and right click and mute selected. So for instance, if I want to see the up and down movement, I would highlight everything except for the Y. Right click, mute selected, and you see how they turn brown? That means that it's not going to show the animation. So if I hit play, that's only going to go up and down. So I can kind of watch that and say, hey, you know what? The up and down is not too bad. So I'll just go to my graph editor, translate Y. I'll delete this keyframe, and I might yeah, I'll just leave that. I think we could probably turn these into linear or flat. It's kind of up for you to decide. Um, since cats walk really soft and dainty, uh, we don't want it to be like a typical walk cycle where the liftoff is so sudden and the landing has a gravity to it. We want it to look a little softer, so I might just leave these, oops, leave these bottom keyframes uh, flattened out. You can always right click unmute all to bring everything back. Translate Z is this uh, left and right movement and we're not going to really have any for the back paw for this part. Uh, it, realistically there probably would be some but we're not going to worry about it. Rotate X, that is the this side to side rotation. We only ever have some as the foot's lifted up. So I'll just highlight and delete that stray keyframe, leave that be. Rotate Y, another random one that will just delete the stray keyframes. Rotate Z, this is kind of the big important one. The one we gotta pay the close uh, close attention to. I'll start off by uh, deleting this stray keyframe, but let's look at some of the theory on why we're gonna need to change this. So the rotation, I'll go to my side view here, it's this right hind leg. If you watch right when that foot takes off, it kind of just lifts off and doesn't feel like there's any energy behind it. doesn't feel like it pushes off. So we're going to adjust that rotation to make it feel a little better. So what I can do is I can grab this this lift off point and I can break the tangent with this button here. And I can kind of make the curve match what was there originally, but by removing that key. So I'll grab this tangent handle and I'll move it down a little bit. Then I might grab this bottom key, weight the tangent, break the tangent, highlight the blue tangent, hold shift, middle mouse, click to the left a bit, and there you go, you get something like that. So you, you might need to kind of watch over here as you're doing this, because you don't want the foot to go through the ground. You want it to actually look like it's pushing off. So like right there, for instance, that's too much. So just kind of have to do a back and forth, see what works best. That's pretty good. All right, and that back leg is, or back toe, paw is done. Let's look at the toe itself. All we have is the rotate Z to look at. Uh, and I think it's a pretty simple fix. We just delete this random keyframe right there. A little bit smoother. And uh, that should be good. So let's kind of look at that back paw. Looks a lot smoother compared to the gray paw. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to do the exact same thing that I did for this black paw for the gray paw. So I'm going to uh, do that real quick. And I'll talk through my process a little quicker this time. So, and here's another nifty trick. Uh, you can highlight your control that you're working on and then shift control the other control. 
the other foot. And the one on top is going to be what you had selected originally. And you can control click the same attribute and you can say, okay, I need it to match up what's it going to look like. For instance, this top one, delete all these keyframes. If I compare it to the other foot, I need uh, this part right, right here where the foot is on the ground to be linear. So I'll turn that linear, break that, turn that tangent linear. Then I need this thing linear right there. This one will break the tangent. Turn that to linear. And I think oh yeah, I'll delete that straight frame. And now they look pretty identical. I'll go to translate Y, compare that. I think all I did was delete that straight frame and it looks like they're not the same height so I'll make those the same height. Translate Z didn't have any. Rotate X. I'll delete this straight frame. Make sure that they're the same numbers. I'll just do like a 6.5 or something. Kind of meet in the middle. Rotate Y. There's some major differences there. Uh, delete this keyframe here. Make sure those numbers are roughly the same. We'll say 12.5. Rotate Z. Compare those two. Uh, the Rotate Z was one that we wanted to pay close attention to. That's the one where we we made sure that it looked like it's actually pushing off. So I'll delete this straight frame, I believe. Yes. Make sure that number is the same. So they're going to both be like negative 95, give or take. I'll break this tangent. Rotate it down a little bit break that, weight it, and shift it out a little bit. And always make sure to go to the point in the animation where it's going to happen. Maybe go to the side view. It's right there. It's kind of pushing off, so it's going through the ground, so I might kind of adjust that to make sure it doesn't go through the ground completely. Good enough. All right, and the, the back legs are entirely done. Uh, the easy part, <laughs> relatively. So if you want, you can play Blast and just watch if you were to like hold your hand up and cover those four legs, which are pretty terrible right now. Uh, and the back legs look pretty smooth, at least in my Maya render. Always make sure to save, uh, obviously. If you want, save as, as a spline version, whatever works best for you and your workflow. Next I'm going to look at these spine, or not spine, these shoulder controls because I have some up and down movement in them and I've also got some rotation and I think that'll help kind of lead me into knowing what I need to fix for the front pause. So first I'll start off with this red shoulder control. I got my graph editor and right now all we have is translate Y and rotate Z. So let's look at the Rotate Z first because I think that'll be an easy cleanup because it's just all these crummy sticky keys. And once again you can either use the cheat where you shift these over negatively or just rotate the tangents to get the flow a little better. That should do that. So let's look at the Translate Y. So after watching this a few times, I feel like that might translate a little too much. So maybe I'll tone that down a little bit, maybe 0.04 instead. Uh, but I will make these tangents down here linear. And I won't adjust the tangent handles, I'll just leave them kind of semi-linear where they interpolate a little bit. That should kind of give it a smoother look, I'm trying to once again cover up the lower four legs and just look at the shoulder by itself. Looks pretty good. So I'll do the same thing for this other shoulder. Translate Y. Tone that down a little bit. 0.04. Turn those tangents into linear. 
and rotate Z. Just going to delete all these frames in between. Make sure that the tangents flow, whether you tr change their location or just rotate the tangents. Play that, and both shoulders look pretty good. Now on to the hard part, and that would be the front legs, the forelegs. And the reason that they're more difficult, I think, is because they have a lot more rotation in them. They're kind of what we see first, especially if the cat's walking toward us. Uh, but just pick a foot to start off with, so I'll select this red control. And bring up my graph editor. Once again, the the thing to do is is to remember to think one step at a time. So you might look at all these keyframes and be like, oh, I don't understand what I'm looking at. We'll just make sure, well, visibility, oh, well, we don't need that. Translate X. Let's focus on that first. So similar to the back feet, we need to make sure that when that leg is on the ground, so from 7 to 22, it translates linearly. So I'll delete those keyframes. I'll grab both of these handles like such, break them, and make them linear. And then, I think what I'll do is use the cheat here. I think will be pretty useful for this one. So I'll delete this keyframe. And I will translate what I have on one. I'll take that back by three frames, so it'll be on negative two. Now, whatever number's there, negative point seven. I'll leave that so that these two tangents, if I highlight them, and zoom in, they're going to look the same going out, which means for this one I have to bring that one forward by uh, whatever it is from here to there. So this one will be from 25, got to add 6 to that, so 31. And then whatever number's here, 0.3. And I'll leave that like that. So now we got the translation finalized on that paw, or spline at least. You notice that there's a pretty bad pop going on right there, 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 there. Um, that's from, likely from the rotations. I don't think it's from the translation. So if I select that and I uh, mute everything except for the translate X and Y, go to mute selected, and I hit play. You know what, it might be might just be the translation after all. We'll come back to that just in case uh, after, just in case the rotations kind of fix it. So we'll look at rotation X next. This is an easy enough fix. We're just gonna kind of pick the peak here which is on frame 4. Oh, I, okay, I think I know what the problem is. It's the rotation uh, it's, it, we want it to peak at 4. That's where the, the paw is dragging the most. But right now we have it peaking right here. So I'm going to grab that. It's on frame 1. And I'm going to move that back uh, 3 frames to kind of use the, the timing cheat again. So I'll put it on negative 2. I'm going to zero that out so it'll kind of flow a little better. And then I'll have to do the same thing right here. I'll move this one forward three, so to 28. I might get the same number ahead here, so let's just make them both 15. Now hopefully that fixed the weird pop. It's better, but there's still a few things going on. Let's move on to the rotate Y. We have a similar issue here, so First of all, the rotate Y is rotating while the foot's on the ground. You see that? So at some point, when I was doing my blocking, I forgot to type in the right number. So I'll select all these keyframes, and I'll type in negative 8. 
and then I will want to make sure that my tangent here is going up into it. I'll do the same thing over here. Might actually tone these two down like this. And then what I can do is I can hold shift and I can select each of those tangents and middle mouse drag them at the same time. Something like that might make a little more sense. Okay, rotate Z. Rotate Z is I'll grab I'll do the same thing. I'll grab those tangents and I'll soften it a little bit. Then I'll shift click like that and just shape them a little better. And that should be good enough. So we've still got a bit of a pop there. So let's take a look at the toe. See if we need to fix anything on that first and then we'll kind of problem solve. So the rotate Z, you know, probably actually probably just leave that as is. So it's definitely a problem in the main foot altogether. And the, the problem is definitely in this translate Y. So uh, I'm going to grab what's on frame one and we're going to back that up also by three frames so it'll put it on negative two and we'll zero that out and then we'll take what we have here on 25 move it forward three frames put it on 28 make sure they're both 0.4 play and see if that, that pretty much fixed it. There's still a little bit of a pop. So we might want to try, let's try offsetting the translate Y. So if you go back to your control here, go to translate Y. These top two keys are on 4 and 28. I'm going to grab both of those. I'm going to shift them back by 1. So this will be on frame 3 and 27 now. I think that the peak of that step may have been interfering a bit. Let's try a different approach to try and solve this problem. So what I'm going to do is right before that foot comes down, I'm going to start the the rotation of that, the rotation Z, a little earlier. So I want that foot to land quicker. So it lands on frame 7. So I'm going to grab what's on 7 and middle mouse drag it to the left onto 6. And I will also make sure that my rotate Y is the same thing. So I'll go to rotate Y, shift that in, rotate X, shift that in. So all the rotations are happening on frame 6 now. So that foot should land a little better. Think, yeah. Okay, actually, I just paused the video and I figured out what the problem is. So, it's always good to pause at certain frames and see if something looks off. So, for instance, on frame 22, this front leg is very hyper extended, it's very straight. And I think what I'm missing there is a little bit of foot roll. So, I, I'm just going to grab, go to rotate Z on this toe control clear out all these useless keys. And I'm just going to start that uh, toe roll much sooner so I can grab that keyframe on 22, hold shift, middle mouse drag, let's say frame 19. Now if I play, much better, 10 times better. Now that we've finished this right foreleg, uh, we'll just follow the same process on this this other the blue one here. So once again, you can highlight that blue control, shift click the red one. That way, you can kind of compare uh, controls or attributes. So go to the translate X first, and from frames one to ten, I got to make sure those are linear, and delete all those yucky keyframes. And then 
delete those things in between, this one right there. I'll change this keyframe to linear, break this tangent, change that tangent to linear. Oops. Just the pink one. Yeah, perfect. Then translate Y. Gotta make sure I have that working correctly. So on the main one, oops. I'm gonna delete this first key and move this one back because that's what we did with our other foot. Yeah, so on frame 15 it'll be whatever we put it at. Then translate Z, don't have any. Rotate X, I'll just compare it to the other one be the opposite obviously so we just kind of have to interpolate so rotate X I'll delete this first key grab the second one and I'll shift it over a couple so it's more more or less in between same thing with rotate Y so up here I noticed I've got a positive 8 and if I were to frame through that that was a mistake that I did blocking watch this foot you notice how it starts to slide on the ground we don't want that so I'll grab this control make that negative 8 and then, same thing I did with the rotate X. I'll grab this first key, delete that, grab the second one, shift it over to like uh, frame 14. Then rotate Z. It's much more important to pay attention to. Oh, I think it'll be easy. Because rotate Z is uh, this control here. So I'll delete that first one, shift this over a couple. And may not need to actually change that. Yeah, we do have. We do once again have a pop. So maybe we grab uh, rotate Z on ten and grab it, move it over to. No, actually, we do that to the toe. That's right. Same thing we did for the red one. So grab the rotate Z on the toe. Shift that back a frame or two. Delete one of those, put that in between. And then that pop should be a lot better. It's still kind of there. I think that that's because with the other toe, I spent a lot of time making sure that it looked like the, the paw was actually pushing off on the black one, right right before it kind of lifts off. Yeah, so you can follow if you want to rewind and just kind of follow along, same process. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on polishing this last leg in the video when it's the same process. But basically, you just want to make sure that that push off kind of happens a little smoother than what we've got it. But for the most part, uh, that's the gist of it. So let's take a look at kind of the more or less final product. And I'll, I'll hide that back leg because it pops a little bit. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm going to add in that that tail wag that I was mentioning in the beginning. So I'll select on, on my rig at least, or my edited rig. I'll select the control, go to frame one, turn on the tail. Uh, then I'm going to start with the base of the tail. So so cats tails have a mind of their own it seems like, right? So we don't want to just animate a rhythmic bobbing up and down and up and down and left and right of the tail as the cat walks. It's pretty boring. We want to add a little bit of something to this. It's a little more realistic. So we'll go to like frame 9 or 10. And I'll just uh, grab that tail and kind of rotate it up or down or left or right. Just kind of pick a direction. And then I'll make sure that I go back to frame 1. Middle mouse drag that all the way to frame... Oops, need to make sure we have frame 25. Uh, so middle mouse drag that to frame 25, hit S so that that tail goes up and then goes back down. Then I'm going to grab 
first half of the tail that we originally posed to be shaped like this, right? And I'll go to frame like, I don't know, 9, 10, 11, whatever. And I'll just kind of shape it in the opposite direction that it was previously. Then I'll go to frame like 18 or 19 and kind of just move it somewhere else. I'll make sure to go to frame 1. Middle mouse drag that to 25. Now I'm going to drag and select the other half of the tail. Go to frame 11 or 12 or where we had that. And kind of pose that in the opposite direction that it was in. Go to 19 or 20 and add in a little bit of lag. Frame 1, middle mouse drag to 25. Hit S. And if we hit play, it's a little too much, I think, that I put on the these right here on 19 or 12 actually I might tone that down a little bit that's the gist of it is to just add a little bit of semi random waviness to the tail uh, and you can certainly make it look a little better if you spend some time uh, but just by adding kind of a random waggle in there, uh, it, it gives it a little more of a cat quality. There we go. Okay, so make sure to save your project often. Obviously, I'm going to turn off my NURBS curves, click to frame up my project with this button, or view camera settings, resolution gate kind of a pick a good view. If you want you can create a cube for your character to stand on. That way they're not just walking out in space. Maybe throw it on a layer so you can't accidentally select it, I'll turn off my grid, and then once I get my framing the way that I like it, I'll turn off this resolution gate, go back to my render settings, scroll down, I'll bump this up to HD 720 personally, then right click, play blast options box, Make sure all my settings are proper. And then hit play blast. We'll watch it one last time before we decide if we call it good. Alright, so watch that. Pretty satisfied with it. So, as I mentioned earlier, and I forgot to do again, if you just make sure to render frames 1 through 24. Then we can play blast that, and all this time I'll save it to file because I like it. Uh, save it. Oops. Give it a name that you want. And if you only f render frames 1 through 24, go to view, loop, hit play, and there you go. Fully functional, pretty basic feed line walk cycle. Uh, there's plenty of things that you can do to polish it up, you know, make the head kind of wander a little bit more, add some accordion squash and stretch in the body, in the head. Uh, plenty of fun things you could do, but the, the main takeaway from this, I think, is pretty much the, the feet placement. Going back to the very first video we had uh, in the blocking where I showed you the, the layout of the footfalls, if you can kind of memorize the footfall pattern, then you'll be in a good place for just jumping into pretty much any quadruped walk cycle. So let me know if you have any questions, turn in your play blast of your finalized walk cycle, and that's all.